Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just give you thanks <coughs> and praise and glory and honor as we come into your presence, O oh Lord, as we set the atmosphere. Hallelujah and the sound. Father, we just bless you. Father, we just worship you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your great grace. Bless your holy name today, Lord. Bless your holy name today, Lord. Bless your holy name today. Father, we don't stop to give you all the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How we do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this time to be in your presence. As we get into your word today, Lord, just move like only you can. Heal, deliver, set free, and bring forth the revelation of your word. Father, we won't stop to bless you. We won't stop to honor you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord, Pastor, how are we now? Before I get into the word, I'm just going to ask Pastor Colley to come. Just pray for those who are listening and watching. Speak a word of the Lord of us just for two minutes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Would you come, Pastor Shalima? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor, and bless your holy name this morning, Father. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that we can be here in your presence, Lord God, worshiping you, giving you all the praise, the honor, Lord God, that you are so worthy of. And Father, for everyone who is watching and those under the sound of my voice now and at a later time, Father, we bring them before you, Lord God, even ourselves, Father. We ask, Lord God, for you to move, touch, heal, deliver, set free, Lord God, like only you can in a time like this, Father. When there is so much despair, when there are so much war and turmoil, rumors, Lord God, of war, when there are so much, Lord God, separation, so much division, so much, Lord God, manipulation, Lord God, so much, uh, Father, witchcraft, so much evil. Lord God, intent, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, where there is a turning away, Lord God, from the brethren, Father. Oh God, where, Lord God, people are giving up, throwing in the towel, giving up on life, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I lift all of us up before you, Lord God, and say, Father, 
Oh God, have your way and move like only you can, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, your word declare that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard, Lord God, against him, Father. And so we declare that every evil power, every evil spirit working against your people, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit lift up a standard, Lord God, against it this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that your people will get up, Lord God. Will lift up. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord. They will run into you, Lord God. Their strong tower. They will use, Lord God. Their mouths, Lord God. Oh, Father, their praise is their weapon, Father. In the name of Jesus. They will use your word like a sword. They will use the mighty name of Jesus that is above every other name to conquer, to overcome, Lord God, the works of the enemy this morning in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Father, we come against every evil and stinking thinking, Father, of, of, of your people this morning in the name of Jesus, every ill wish, every ill spoken word, Lord God, every ill spoken thought in the name of Jesus, because even as your word declare, if a man just look at a woman and it's just a thought, Lord God, then it would have already been a sin. And so every evil thought against your people, every spirit of hatred against your people, Lord God, when it's the same as murder this morning, we come against it, Lord God, with the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. We come against it with the blood, hallelujah, of Jesus, which cleanses, which protects, which heals, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we come against, Lord God, every octopus spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, that yes. try to confront up the mind of people, Lord God. Those who are saved and those who are unsaved, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we know, Lord God, because we are spiritual beings. We know, Lord God, because we are your fivefold leaders. The spirit of suicide, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come against it. Not in the not in a fleshly, a physical realm, but we bind and cancel it in the realm of the spirit, Father. In the name of Jesus, every tentacle that is on the mind of your people, Lord God, to cause depression, to cause schizophrenia, to cause bipolar. In the name of Jesus, to cause self-defeat, Lord God, to cause self-affliction. In the name of Jesus, and ultimately, Lord God, to capture and to totally destroy the soul of your people, to send them to a condemnation, uh, to the pit of hell. We come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. We chop off every tank, every tentacle of that octopus, of that squid, in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Every other demonic spirit that is working along with it, every stronghold, we pull it down and come against it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, Lord God, that this is your time, this is the time when your people will rise up, Father, not just in talks, Father, but in prayer, Lord God, in supplication, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the turning away from sin, Lord God, in the turning away from the playing, from the masquerading, Lord God, but get down to business, Father, to heal the sick, Lord God, to heal those who are wounded, to set you, those who are captive free, Lord God, for them to liberate your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, for them to walk and represent the kingdom, for others to see and know, Lord God, for their spirit, to testify, Lord God, that their children, hallelujah, of the Lord this morning, God, in the name of Jesus, for them to cast out devil, for them to do the works of the Lord that you have commanded them to do, Lord God, hallelujah, so that those who are helpless, those who are hopeless, Father, they will find hope. They will seek after this hope, Lord God. They will come into the Lord Jesus as their dwelling place. And they too will turn around, Lord God. They too will repent, Father. In the name of Jesus, 
They will have overcoming power to overcome the wise of the devil, to overcome those captures of the soul, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And for you to do your work, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, those, Lord God, who your eyes are upon, Father, those who you have called your own, Lord God, who are already in your kingdom, and those who will be coming, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you move with your deliverance, hallelujah, power, and through your servants, through your angelic hosts, Father God, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, heal and deliver, Father. Restore the souls of your people in the mighty name of Jesus. For your word declare, Lord God, even as the uh, psalmist declare, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, hallelujah, no evil, that you shall, hallelujah, restore souls, Lord God, a soul. And so, Father, restore the souls of your people, Lord God. Restore the souls from sexual immorality, Lord God. Restore the souls from other demonic soul ties, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Restore the souls, Lord God, for when they did things, Lord God, that they were not aware of, that caused them to be so deep in the tentacles, Lord God, in the webs of the enemy, Lord God. Open their eyes, Father. Everyone who is begging for mercy, everyone who is begging for a Savior, petitioning you for deliverance, Lord God, we come and stand with them to say, let their souls be restored, Lord God. Let their minds be renewed in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Father, we don't want to just talk the talk, Lord God. We don't want to just give an eloquent fluff. Lord God, to analyze the situation of why people are depressed. Oh God, of why people are becoming introverts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We don't want to come with, oh God, pretty words, Lord God, pretty lies. Hallelujah, to make it look good, to make some or anyone more exalted than anyone else, Father. The truth is all of us need a Savior, Lord God. The truth is all of us need a spiritual intervention, a spiritual uprooting and awakening, Father. To uproot, Lord God, everything is not of you, Father. And for seeds to be planted, Lord God, that will grow fruit, Lord God, of the Spirit in your people, Lord God. That will strengthen them, Lord God. That they will go out to the highways and the byways, Lord God, to rescue, hallelujah, those who need rescuing, Father. Oh God, your word declared that the laborers, oh God, are few, but the harvest is so plentiful, Father. Oh God, we call on laborers, Lord God, to awaken and take their rightful place, Father. We declare, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that there be a spiritual rush, Lord God, that there be a supernatural anointing and a clarity. Oh, step forward. Laborers who love the people of God. Laborers who love the Lord first and foremost, oh God. Because how can they go out and save others? How can they go out and preach and teach, Lord God, if they don't know? And even if they don't have love, hallelujah. If they don't have the love, the perfect love, hallelujah. And so God, because the heart of the King is in the hands of the Lord, we declare, oh God, that every king, every kingdom citizen, Lord God, everyone who endeavor to do the will and the work of the Lord, Lord God, that they will repent to, they will do a cleansing, oh God, of their own self, they will ready themselves, Lord God, to go out for a supernatural sweet father. I prophesy, oh God, and stir it up in the realm of the spirit, oh God, that the right, true and living saints of God will go forward, Lord God, within the next few weeks, Lord God, and make a difference in the life of those who are suffering, those, Lord God, who are overburdened with, oh God, with our children with the financial, oh God, financial burdens, Lord God, hallelujah, with financial attacks, Lord God, with familial attacks, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, with attacks on their health, Father, 
in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that they will do, O oh God, their rightful bidding according to the word of God and according to what you have sent us to do. Lord God, that there be a change. Hallelujah. We believe and know, O oh God, that your saints are there. They are ready and prepared, Father. And so we stand with them and strengthen them, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. And Father, for those who are watching, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, I want to speak strength. I want to speak strength over them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, where they are we, you make them strong, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I just have one request, oh God, too, in the mighty name of Jesus. You arise and let their enemies scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. And let others know that you are their God. Let the world go. Let those, hallelujah, agents of Satan know, hallelujah, that you are our God this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. So we cover this session now. We cover those who are watching from all over the world. And we declare that you have your way, Father. Have your way. Hallelujah. In this place, Lord God. I store pure, pure minds, Lord God, by way of remembrance upon your people. Hallelujah. That are mindful of the words which are spoken, Lord God, by the holy prophets and by your people. Hallelujah. Beyond the hearts and minds of your people. And that we all will humble ourselves. Hallelujah. And not wait, Lord God, on those who are called industry professionals to go out and do the work hallelujah that you have commanded us to do and so Father we thank you for equipping us now we thank you for the sending out in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus we pray hallelujah and give you praise glory and honor and bless your holy name hallelujah because you are so worthy this morning Father release your love upon your people let your love, even though there's a turning away and your word declares that men will become lovers of themselves, Lord God. We know that there's a remnant. And so let your remnant arise and make a difference. Hallelujah. In their communities, in their homes, in their families, in their countries, in their regions. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, we cover the service now with the blood. We release the fire. Hallelujah. Of the Lord over the airways. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for that time. Amen, Pastor. Uh, for that powerful prayer. God bless you, all of you saints who are listening and watching here and uh, around the nation. We greet you in Jesus' name. I want to greet uh, Apostle Naya. Good to see you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Viva, uh, Temple, Prem, uh, all from India, Kharki, hallelujah. God bless you. Just continue to put where you are, hallelujah, where you're watching from. God bless you. Dr. Kila for calling here. We're jumping in the word today. We have a powerful message that will be shouting out. Stay to that because we're going to be praying and ministering and prophesying over your lives. Amen. But we have a word and we're talking about the kingdom of hell. What the hell is it? We're talking about the kingdom of hell. And this is a subtopic. What the hell is it? As I would say, uh, deep prayer, I want to pray for a few minutes. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, just continue to speak to your people. Minister this word to us so that it can transform lives and have us change. And Father, we won't stop to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you listening and watching live on Facebook. Those who are watching on YouTube. Those who are watching on Power and Glory TV, Dominion TV, or Kingdom Insight TV. Or whatever platform you're watching this around the world. God bless you. Thank you for your prayers. We have made an intense prayer for you and our partners and our friends and all of our listening audience. Thank you 
for your powerful, powerful prayers, your words of encouragement, and your blessing. Amen. Uh, we have been in intense prayer, and this topic the Lord gave us uh, as I was studying it, the Lord began to speak to me clearly about hell. I began to look all around me, and all I could have seen over the last few weeks is hell. What is that hell? The real physical hell that many have died and gone to. And the Lord said to me, I want you to go and study hell and tell my people and warn my people. Because many, many, many are not talking about hell. The Lord said the churches have gone quiet about hell because they don't want to seem like they're frightening people away. Say amen. Amen. And the sad reality is many are dying and going to a crisis hell. Many are rejecting Jesus Christ as Lord and going to hell. Many are not uh, living a life after the pact of Jesus and making him Lord and they're going to hell. And many are, are going after other religion or gods or money or things and going to hell. And the Lord began to show me that many who are, who are going into religion and dying and going to hell. And I began to study and I began to call on different people and listen to their testimonies they had about hell experience. Many who have died and the Lord brought them back from hell and hell is a real place. Hell is a terrible place. Hell is a dark place. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of darkness and deep dark place. Many are going there. Many are going there. They are going by the millions. Uh, medical science report that there are over a hundred thousand plus deaths per day around the world. Did you know that? And in some, the numbers are even higher. It means people are dying every day. And the Bible says it's an appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. You better share this today. I'm going to go into the scriptures. One of the most frightening things happened to me a few weeks ago. Uh, we were on listening to the radio station. And I began to cry in my spirit. And I almost wanted to physically cry because there was a well-known personality. People of God, here are listening and watching. On radio, who professed to be a Christian and he, he glorifies the church that he attends. A good-sized church. But that he, in the midst of it, he was saying how he was a part of another society, a secret society, an undercover society, a satanic society. See, so you cannot serve God and serve Satan. You can't be <clears throat> in an organization that glorifies Satan. That is built on secrecy. That is built on satanic worship. That's built on satanic praises that is built on Goto, the great architect of the universe, being their God. It cannot be. You cannot be in an organization in college or university that they worship the Greek gods, Minerva, or the gods of Jekyll, or Pleiades, or Pluto, or Atlas, the Greek Roman gods of these university and colleges of which many, the Lord showed me, they went into college and universities and joined these organizations thinking they were for civic and social advancement. But the deeper they get into it, the more they found that it's not compatible with serving Jesus Christ. You cannot serve Jesus and mammon. You cannot have two masters. And so this man is a part of, of these uh, uh, societal orders. And he was leading thousands astray today. He's on the radio today. And one of the things he said on multiple occasions is that hell is not real. He doesn't believe in hell. He doesn't accept hell. He doesn't believe in a place of place called hell, a place of destruction. When Jesus said it, 
How in the world, how in the hell, you can say there's no hell. The man's God is an unjust God, and there's no hell. There's no real, real need for us to live holy and righteous. If there's no hell, there's no penalty for the unrighteous and the ungodly, the adulterous, the thief, the liar, the criminal, the murderer. If there's no hell, then the Bible is a lie because the Bible said Satan, hell was created for Satan and his angels. But many will go there. I need you to like this and share this quickly because there's some family member of yours and mine who are on their way to hell. They rejected the gospel. They rejected the word of God. <clears throat> Nations are going to hell. I begin to pray. The Lord begin to show me in a vision. Uh, nations going to hell. What is nation? Scores of people from nations <coughs> going to hell. The Lord begin to show me many who are religious are missing. The Lord. Let's get into the word. I'm not going to prolong this. Turn your Bibles to Second Peter. Peter, get your book, please. 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 Thank you, those who are listening or watching. All that Boston Club. We're praying for you, Brother Kipson, and the wonderful work he's doing. Lesita, Fopens, God bless you, Benoy. Watching from Andaman and Nicobar, Karki. Hallelujah. David Asantina, Dimple. God bless you. Michelle, God bless you, Michelle. Sharon Johnson, God bless you. Those who watch a child's Muslim apostle in South Africa, we see you. Uh, Malawi, we see you. Zimbabwe, we see you. Nassau, we see you. Florida, we see you. Uh, Bhutan, India, Nicobar, we see you. All around Freeport, hallelujah, we see you. Hallelujah. Let's turn to this because I. My heart is overwhelmed. I want to teach you things that you might have never heard about hell before. Let's go quickly. Second Peter chapter 3. <clears throat> Peter, one of the apostles that uh, walked with Jesus, wrote this book and it's very powerful. Hallelujah. Read this second epistle. Beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this, Peter said, get ready. First, that there shall come in the last day of scoffers. <coughs> Stop right there. In his last and final days. Do you know we're in the last and final days? Yes. We have to live like these are the last days. Uh, uh, being in the medical field, we're seeing, I, I, I've never seen so many just people just dying. I opened the obituary this last week, and there are so many people dying suddenly of all ages. And as I looked through it, the Holy Spirit was just telling me, this one has gone to hell. This one has lost his soul. Ah, uh, this one didn't get to know me before. It was too late. Uh, this one is my son. This one is my daughter. And I looked through the obituary, and it made me want to cry. Hallelujah. As we hear about our, our young people being slain on the street, I know many of them, the Lord said, they've died and gone to hell. Saving is finding people who are lost and taking them out instantly. He's not giving them a chance to repent. The Bible said in these last days, Peter said in 2 Peter 3, there should come scoffers. These are people who are mocking the church. We had an incident. I took my family to visit a, 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 a person who was supposed to be a man of God by a church. Uh, and we got in the church so excited to share the love of God and the fellowship of the Lord. And it started off good for the first two, three minutes. Uh, and after the fourth minute, the person turned into another person. An unclean spirit overtook them. And they began to say some things. And I had to step out of my position. And I had to rebuke them in the name name of Jesus. Scoffers. There are people who will go in the church 
who don't know Jesus Christ. There are people who are holding positions in ministry and in church who are scoffers. They are mockers of Jesus Christ. It's a big joke. It's a scam. It's a money-making scheme. It's not a place of prayer. It's not a place of worship. It's not a place. I said when I left uh, Shalewa and I, we drove off. We said, my God, it's impossible for someone who says uh, they are in the house of God praying to have such an unclean spirit, uh, to be so bitter, to be so angry, to be so frustrated. To, hallelujah. To go from, hallelujah, loving God to cursing you in the next minute. That's what I know many are scoffers. The Bible said many people who are walking and in the church, they are on their way to hell. They are scoffers. They don't really believe Jesus is Lord. They're not serving the true living God. As the Bible said, uh, and you shall know them, the song said, you should know them by their love, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. One of the greatest characteristics of the Christian who follows Jesus Christ is they have a supernatural love for the Lord Jesus Christ. They have a love for the Lord even unto death. They have a love to see everyone share the gospel. Hallelujah. Not, you're not a Christian just waiting to get out here and everyone else can go to hell. That's the mentality of some people. They think only them saved. Only them know the Lord. Only them will see the Lord. And I begin to pray for some of those individuals this past week because many of them are self-righteous. And they the mean once the Lord said, I am taken to hell. It's when you have a self-righteousness, when you have a self-exaltation, when you feel you are more righteous than everyone else, that only you want hands from the Lord, only you want pray, only you want know the Lord, you are in danger of God's judgment. But when you humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, I need your washing every day. I need your washing in the morning. I need your washing and cleansing in the day. I need your washing in the evening. Hallelujah. My wife and I were talking as we were on the way here to service today. Scoffers. What is a scoffer? We were talking about a big denomination here where one of the superintendents is a homosexual. But all our sister homosexual. There are so many homo. That's a scoffer. And the whole denomination is going to put a man who's a homosexual where they've been doing it for many, many generations. That's a scoffer. How could you put a homosexual? How could you put, hallelujah, I was watching the church of America, United uh, 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 Methodist, uh, they just bought it last week. They have a practicing lesbian leader who's the president of United Methodist. They have practicing lesbians who are pastors. Practicing homosexuals uh, who are not only practicing but married and they live that life and believe that life. And they voted just a few weeks ago unanimously. Or unanimously. Or the majority to allow persons who are practicing the lifestyle of fornication, adultery, sodomy, and homosexuality, lesbianism, to be pastors, and to marry, and to marry others. Scoffers! And these people, many of them think they are on their way to heaven. And it's not that, then we have another major organization that has elected as their president are people who are a free, full-blown Masonic order. But let me tell you right now, as I pray and sought the Lord and the Word of God, you cannot be in a Masonic order and serve the Lord as pastor. In fact, the Lord showed me in the scripture and in, a, in, in His Word to my spirit, if you are in any Masonic order, you won't make it to heaven. You are lost. You have made a covenant with a satanic order. I said it. Anyone who listened to me, call me and I'll show you in the scripture. But there are thousands of 
persons in the church, pastors, and the Lord began to show me pastors who are Masonic. Hallelujah. I can believe it. And they have laid hands on other people and they have, co they have commissioned other churches. Uh, and, and the Lord showed me the same ones who did that, that, uh, that satanic uh, spirit uh, went from that person's hands uh, onto others. Many are in secret societies. Many are in cupboards. Uh, many are witches and warlocks uh, and call themselves pastors and ministers. They are scoffers. Uh, they are making mockery of the true church and the true people of God. <clears throat> and no wonder in America and Canada and Europe there's great exposure. Some of the greatest named pastors and bishops are being exposed to be homosexuals, uh, to be pedophiles, uh, to be lesbians, to be scoffers, uh, to be mockers, uh, because the Lord said, I'm cleaning up my house. And I'm not going to let the innocent people who love me be restricted and stopped into going into the kingdom by a few rotten eggs, uh, by a few wicked denominational leaders. Uh, hallelujah. Who think they're going to change the law of God for their own glory. Say amen. amen. That's what they do. It scoffers. Look at what the Bible said. Second Peter 3. Knowing this first that there should come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Uh, hallelujah. They're not trying to serve God. They're not trying to be all inclusive. They just want to practice their nasty sexual lifestyles. That's all homosexual and lesbianism is. It's nothing more than adultery and fornication and bestiality. It's the same thing. It is human beings. Uh, hallelujah. Whether in the church or not. Uh, who want to fulfill their nasty lusts. Uh, hallelujah. Who want to practice anal sex. Uh, who want to practice lesbian sex. Uh, who want to practice. Uh, hallelujah. Sexual toy stimulation. Who want to go against the will of God. Uh, between a man and a woman. The rightful order. Hallelujah. And they want to fulfill all of their lusts. It doesn't make a difference. Whether it's homosexual lusts, masturbation lusts, fornication lusts, pornographic lusts, hallelujah, it's just those who uh, are in these positions who don't want to get delivered. Who doesn't know that a Jesus Christ and his blood can drive that devil the hell out of you? And that's what it is. It's nothing more but a strong demonic yoke in your life. How is it? Why? You went and touched something in college. As a young child, you might have been molested. Or you just experimented. And now you got the demon and the lust of homosexuality in your life. You got the demon and the lust of perversion in your life. You got the lust and demon spirit of sodomy. And you don't want Jesus to deliver you. You don't want Jesus to set you free. You rather sit back and accept that I'm going to live a homosexual life. I'm going to live a lesbian lifestyle. I'm going to live a fornicated. I'm going to sleep with every woman I know, every man I know. Uh, I'm going to do it for money. I'm going to do it for power. I'm going to do it for pleasure. Whatever you're doing it for is to fulfill your own lustful desires. Peter said in chapter 3 of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 4, share this quickly, Andrew. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? You see these scoffers? Aren't they saying that now? Where is Jesus? And when is he coming? That's what the world is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Scoffers. I watched some political things over the last few weeks. And I realized these are just scoffers. Hallelujah. What are scoffers? Scoffers are hallelujah. They're asking, when is Jesus coming? And I look at South Africa, India's election, and, and America's election, and the world leaders' election, and what am I seeing? People who are unrighteous, who have unrighteous agendas, who are following false gods and evil gods. They have Christians voting for them. How can you be a follower of Jesus and vote for a person who is polyistic, polytheistic? How can you be a Christian? And vote. In fact, one Freemason told me the other day, 
uh, this country or we can put Freemasons in power. And I was shocked. He said, no matter what you do, there's a secret order that determines who was born in this country. I said, my God. And that's almost every country. He said, look at the countries around the world. He said, the satanic order of the Masonic order is taking over the world. This is what a high rank kid makes him told me. He said, Satan's agenda is to put their people in position to govern countries. And I said, look at the idiot people, eh? Christians who love Jesus voting in these people as president of councils of the Christian councils, putting them as presidents of ministerial or uh, church association. How can a person who is uh, going to a secret house uh, and performing secret rituals uh, in a satanic order coming to the same holy altar to get left up Jesus? No wonder why people are afflicted. The Lord said that's why the people in these churches are afflicted with cancer and incurable diseases. Why? The leader is tied up in occult practices. Many of them are witches and warlocks and wizards. I meant to preach. Hallelujah. They are witches. They are warlocks. They are wizards. They are in secret covenants. They are in secret orders making secret decisions. Hallelujah. Promoting the agenda of the satanic kingdom. Then they come to the church and holler at you. And you don't have eyes to discern and see nothing has changed in your life. Huh? You're still poor, broken, sick. Huh? Your family ain't going nowhere. Huh? And you know what they involve in. Huh? I'm talking about my pastor, my bishop. Huh? Your bishop is a warlock. That's all he is. If your pastor going to a secret area, he's a warlock. Hallelujah. I heard one yesterday say he gonna bring his bishop around my place. My wife said, "Don't let that devil come around there." Amen. Hallelujah. That man is known in the city to be a witch, a warlock, a wizard. Hallelujah. A worshiper of Satan. Hallelujah. A cheater, an adulterer, a thief. Hallelujah. The people in his membership are homosexual, sweethearts, adulterers, fornicators. Hallelujah. And that's the church you gonna go to. You big donkey. You are not more than a donkey. The Bible said they were scoffers. I saw a ministry we were driving past. We came here. Let me tell you about scoffers. Uh, hallelujah. They were in a large house uh, for many years. How can you take a church and put it in a large house? Uh, hallelujah. A Masonic house. Uh, the same place where they perform rituals through the week. You go to church the same day. And after almost 10 years of doing that, hallelujah, now you're outside under the sky. And I passed there and the Holy Spirit said, that ain't me. That's not of me. I'm not a God that takes you back. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't take you into a demonic house. I don't take you in a demonic place. I don't care how much you pray over a satanic altar. You'll never purify it. Say amen. amen. I don't care how you put on gospel concert and put your children dress up on Halloween. Halloween is a day for Satan and for demons and for devils and for witches and warlocks. I don't care how much you put your children in Bible characters. It's a day for Satan. You will never sanctify that day. Even though that day belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a day for witches and warlocks and wizards. Uh, and for people to do their occult practices. Uh, to make blood sacrifices. Uh, I don't care what you say, it will never change. You could go to any satanic altar. You could never sanctify that altar. What a person has sanctified. Uh, that's why this house is so important. We have sanctified this altar unto the Lord Jesus Christ. So you know devil can have no power and authority in him. The clubs, the bars are sanctified for Satan. Do you know that? Do you know that the owners of these places most of them sanctify what I say? No, let's sanctify that in a holy term. The word sanctify means set apart. Let me change it then. There are some people who own bars and clubs. I heard a report of one who goes in every day and 
set aside that club and that bar for Satan's work. So that when people come in there, they are intoxicated. They are under the influence of drugs and alcohol. They are under the influence of sex. And one report I heard of a bar owner, he used to pee in the, the bear and the liquor he gave to them as an occult practice. He would urinate in the liquor. It was a part of a satanic occult. This is a true story. Hallelujah. To entangle the people. To ensnare them. Hallelujah. Do you know when you go to the club and the strip club and these dance clubs, don't you know that's set apart for Satan? The minute you cross that door, there's a spirit, a demon power that comes on you. That's why you want to drink, you want to smoke, you want to have sex. You will leave there and have sex with any old prostitute, any old mermaid spirit woman, any old Delilah, any old Jezebel. There's a spirit of Satan that enters you. The Bible said in 2 Peter 3, and saying, where is the promise of the coming for sent? The fathers fell asleep. All things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Second Peter 3 and 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old. Watch this. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perish. Watch this. This is what I want to tell you now. Verse 7. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. I'm talking about the kingdom of hell. The power of hell. Do you know that hell is not only a physical place, but hell is a personality. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you that in the book of Revelation. Stay with me. I have a number of scriptures. I have about 20 scriptures quickly to show you the reality of hell. Hallelujah. Hell is operating. Hell is sucking in people quickly. The Bible says hell is enlarging. I mean, it's getting bigger and bigger to occupy the lives of people who are going there. There are some people who are operating under the kingdom of hell. Just like there are people operating under the kingdom of God, there are people operating under the kingdom of hell. There are people who are full of Satan. I've never seen it before. But the Bible says the last days, men will become lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Scoffers, mockers, hallelujah, adulterers, fornicators, liars, all of them shall have their part in the lake of fire and of hell. There are people Who are operating under hell. You don't want to go there. The Bible said in 2 Peter 3 and 7, watch this now. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and partition of ungodly men. The Bible said, the heavens and the earth which are now, say now. Somebody type now. <clears throat> Which are by the same word are kept in store. Reserved unto fire. Say fire. As I was praying the spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> I went into an organization. About two weeks a bike in this community. And I was talking to the bike manager. And I began to share something. And the spirit of the Lord overcame and overshadowed me. And I looked right at that person because the Lord gave me a revelation. While they were talking and I talked back to them, I told them just, I said, remember these things ain't going to last forever. And you're not going to be in this position forever. And the Spirit of the Lord, as I left, the lady looked at me with another worker and was staring. She was staring. She said, and do you know I left there that day the next morning, she called me personally on my phone. Say, I'm sorry. We want to really work with you. We want to really uh, uh, do some things with you. Please let us know. I said, okay. Thanks for calling, okay? What does that mean? The Lord began to show me, and I spoke something in her spirit, and it penetrated her heart. <clears throat> what was it? You're not going to live forever, and this organization is not going to be around forever. How do I know that? And I began to pray that day. I said, Lord, what are you showing me? And the Spirit of the Lord said, Heaven and earth, all of the banks, all of the governments, all of the hotels, all of the medical clinics, all of the 
pharmaceutical industries, uh, all of uh, 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 the EV technologies, uh, all of the cars uh, and the truck manufacturing, all of the food manufacturing, all of the boats, every system of man, the heavens and earth are going to be burned by fire from the Lord. That gave me a revelation. The Lord said to me, I want you to begin to live like you have an understanding of what's coming at the end. Come on, say hallelujah. The Lord said, I've just really told me, and I want to share this with you. The Lord said, if you know, which you know my word has said, I'm going to read more of it, that this heaven and earth and everything in it, <clears throat> a lot of people are, what do I say? Uh, the Lord began to show me a lot of people are jealous and angry over money and house and property. Do you know that every property on this earth is going to melt with fire? Do you know that every building is going to melt with fire? Do you know that all the gold and the diamond, I saw where uh, they said uh, 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 about a hundred tons of gold uh, left Africa illegally. And I just saw in India <clears throat> where they took about over four, I think 400 or 4,000 Tons of gold they took out of London where it was in storage and they're bringing it back on an airline back to India this past week. All of that gold at the coming of the Lord is going to be dissolved with fire. And I said, Lord, I repent. And I said, Lord, I'm going to tell your people. He said, tell my people, stop letting hell take control of them. Stop being consoled by the cares of this world. It's all going to burn with fire. Stop losing your soul. Stop losing your righteous integrity. Stop sacrificing your soul and your life and your body for the ladder that's going to perish. The gold that's going to perish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of Amazon. I love Amazon. The Lord said, Amazon one day by fire. The Lord's fire. All of the nicest yachts. And I said, Lord, this is what most people uh, uh, came up walking with you for. For the pleasures of this life. Uh, for the lust of this life. Uh, for the cares and things of this life. And the Lord said, yeah, I'm going to burn it with fire. Hell fire is going to consume it all. Watch this. 2 Peter 3 and 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as what? One day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men come slackness. But is long suffering to us what? The Lord said I am saving my coming back. So that some people can get saved. The Lord said I am long suffering. Jesus would have come here a long time ago. But he's waiting for some of you and I to get saved. He's waiting for some of your relatives and mine to get saved. That's why he's long suffering. He's calling people every day. Come to me. Not to their religion. Not to a church denomination. But to me as your savior. Come to me as Lord. Come to me as savior. Come to me as your king. Come into my kingdom. The Lord doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But he's a righteous God. Say righteous God. He's a righteous judge. He's a righteous king. I was watching the parliament of my country this past month. And my country has set up laws that if they violate laws, whether tax laws or anti-gang laws or criminal laws, they've set boundaries. And if you break that, guess what's going to happen? You're going before a judge who, it doesn't matter if they like you or not, they're going to rule based on the law. And if you're found guilty of violating and breaking the law, there's a penalty. That penalty is called prison. Well, Jesus is no different. He has given us a law, the law book. It's the law of his kingdom. It's the law of how he must operate. And if he created man, and man can send people to a prison for penalty for violating the law. He is a righteous God. How can he sit on his throne as a righteous God and kick Satan out of heaven for rebellion and yet let man who rebelled all their lifetime, who had the precious blood,
blood of Jesus, who had the forgiveness of sins through the cross and the blood of Jesus, who have had the Holy Spirit's leading, who have had the preach gospel. Guess what? Satan has never had the preach gospel. Satan made one mistake. I was kicked out of heaven for all eternity. But man has to preach gospel every day. Hallelujah. A preacher somewhere around the world is telling men, women, boys and girls to renounce your lifestyle. To admit that you are lost. To admit you are a sinner. To admit you have violated the laws of God. And come before a merciful judge and receive mercy. This judge wants to give mercy to the whole world through Jesus Christ his son he doesn't want you to go to a place called hell which is the kingdom of heaven's prison he <coughs> say amen that's a revelation for you and I hell is the kingdom of heaven's prison hell is the place where the unrighteous the wicked the evil the violators of principles of this word Hallelujah, the mockers, the scoffers of the kingdom of Jesus and his government and his laws go. Ah, uh, they are separated eternally from his presence. But the Lord said, he's not slack concerning what he's going to do. He is coming again. He is going to destroy this heaven and earth. He is going to send Satan and his uh, demons into a Christless eternal hell. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some man comes slack to shed us quickly. But is long suffering to us. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. The Lord Jesus as king and lord and a righteous judge wants everyone. I don't understand why people are dying and going to hell. I don't understand why men will still follow a dumb Lucifer, why would they follow Satan? Lucifer, the devil, what does he promise you? Liquor drinking, what does he promise you? Unlimited sexual immorality, hallelujah. What does he promise you? Unlimited fulfilling of everything your body wants. At what price? At the price of not only destruction in this life, not only suicide and death, not only disease and torment, but eternal, eternal, everlasting, forever judgment outside of the presence of the Lord, outside of mercy, outside of grace. Why would you want to serve the devil? I don't know. Why are churches stuck in the four corners of a building? When the world is dying and going to hell. Sometimes I feel so tired. <clears throat> Why? You say, Pastor, because it's like every day I'm sharing Pastor and I and our ministry and our evangelists and the saints who are with us but here and around the world. I hear your stories and nations around the world. They are sharing the gospel every day, every day. And it seems like, oh my God, hallelujah. When will man come to their repentance? But the Spirit of the Lord said, the church must pray. That's why Pastor Shalewa prayed today. We worship all this morning. And she prayed for the Lord to break the scales, that tentacles of that unclean spirit. Hallelujah. Luciferian spirit. Demonic powers. The yoke of Satan that keeps men blind. People's minds are tormented by an evil spirit. We saw it this week. Hallelujah. The devil is attacking the minds of people. People are suicidal and want to throw in their lives instead of surrendering to the Lord Jesus and allowing him to have his way and change their life and allowing the word of God to uplift them. People are going out of their mental Orders. People are going into a state of depression. People are going into a state of fear. People are going, hallelujah, outside of God's will. Hallelujah. I'd rather go to the drug, to the marijuana, to the cocaine, to the bottle, to ease their problems. They'd rather go to, hallelujah, sex. Hallelujah. They'd rather go to cutting themselves. 
uh, hallelujah, all around the world. Man, women, boys and girls wouldn't come to the only one in history who died and shed his blood that we may live. But yet Jesus wants everyone can you imagine that? All seven to eight billion people, Jesus want everyone to come to repentance. And that's why it bothers me that churches are, are busy having tea parties and having masquerades when the world is dying and going to hell. I've spoken to some Christians who just feel all they have to do, <coughs> the rapture is coming. Every week the rapture is coming. Because they are full of themselves. And I begin to say, Holy Spirit, why these people always talk about the rapture and Jesus coming? Yes, he's coming. If you really believe Jesus is coming, you would go on the street corner and preach day and night unwavering. If you really believe Jesus is coming this month or this year, you and I would turn off our TVs. So we would say, family, we love you. <coughs> but sorry, we would get on platforms like these uh, and we will tell the world in India we'll tell Hindus come to Jesus uh, we'll blast in Afghanistan Iran Iraq and we'll tell the Muslim stronghold of Northeast India the Middle East uh, come to Jesus uh, we will speak to the Isles of the Pacific uh, and tell them renounce uh, hallelujah Buddhism Confucianism uh, and the ancient gods and come to the same knowledge of Jesus Christ. If we really believe Jesus was coming, we would go to Africa and say, give up the gods of your fathers. Give up your ancestral gods. Give up the god of the tree and of the snake. Give up the gods of your forefathers. Renounce those satanic altars and renounce tribalism. Hallelujah. That holds you between and between. You know what I mean? We preach in Africa, and some places in Africa, they will keep a little bit of Jesus, but they keep in their uh, ancestral rituals. Uh, they're keeping their obey, uh, their occult practices. Uh, they're keeping uh, their black magic, their white magic. Uh, oh, if you believe Jesus was coming, uh, you would go to uh, the Hispanic uh, nations and say, give up your Santeria. Uh, Give up your, yeah, what's the other one? Huh? Your worship of huh? Mary. Give up your Catholicism huh? and come to Jesus. Huh? Give up the worship of the saints huh? and the worship of Mary huh? and come to the true worship of Jesus alone. Huh? If you huh, really believe Jesus was coming huh? and there's a true hell that man will go to huh? and he's coming soon, huh? oh, you would go to Europe huh? and say, Give up your white paganism. Give up your white nationalism. Listen, give up your oh God, your white supremacy. Give up your gypsy and white magic. Hallelujah. And your occult practices on oh, Europe. Your paganism. Hallelujah. Your atheism. Hallelujah. Your stoicism. Oh God, your satanism. Your satanic philosophies of Europe. If you believe, you would say to America, Hallelujah, Canada and Mexico. Give up your sexual perversion. Give up your distortion. Give up your confusion. Give up, hallelujah, your pornography. Give up your Satanism, your occultism, your left wing, your right wing, your whole God, your oh God, worship of self. Hallelujah, your humanism, your secular humanism, where you feel you're superior, but you feel your body is your own. You can do what you want. Give up your democracy ideology and come into Theology, knowing that you are not your own and you don't have the right to do with your body what you want, but your body belongs to God. You can't marry a dog, you can't have sex with your cat. Hallelujah, you can't sleep with your snake. Oh God, you can't tattoo up your body. Your body belongs to God. He loaned it to you. You can't, hallelujah, change God's law and put homosexuality. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah, in the church. You can't change God's law. Hallelujah. You may be liberal in the land of the free, but you can't change the law of God. You can't change his righteous order. It's one man. God said, for this cause, I put Adam to sleep, and I made him a woman. And for this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and marry a woman. God still wants man and woman to have children. God still wants family. God still wants kingdom order. You can change it in your law book, but God's frowned upon it. He'll never accept homosexuality. It's not his kingdom order. <clears throat> God will have to repent to Sodom and Gomorrah if he accepts your homosexuality. <clears throat> the Lord will have to apologize to Israel if he accepts your ideology. And your idols, which is yourself. You know, many people are idols unto themselves, especially in the developed countries. Europe and America uh, feel they are gods, many of them. They have an ideology of self worship, self idolization, self glory, self promotion. It's all about self. And the first person who got kicked out of heaven. And created the first sin was Satan. He was full of himself. And this self leads people, hallelujah, to pornography. The biggest pornographic industry in the world is from North America. The largest homosexual capital in the world is in America. <clears throat> the greatest bestiality is taking place now in Canada. <clears throat> the greatest racism and racial prejudice now is in America and Canada. <clears throat> the greatest uprising of false religion now is in America. The once great Christian nation, and there are still many Christians there, that evangelize the world. The world is now at a greater rate sending more evangelists and missionaries from Africa and the Caribbean to America and Europe because they become pagan. They become confused and self-exalted. <clears throat> if you believe Jesus was coming and hell was real, you would go to the largest population of the world, India, where paganism and idol worship and Hinduism is still dominating the country. After all these years of preaching the gospel, it's still not proper 20% of the nation, 1 billion people, I mean 800 million people are locked into polytheism. They're worshiping over 6 million gods. They're worshiping all types of false gods. After all these years, oh God, with the gospel available on every, every platform, oh God, Asia, between India, China, and the Pacific, nearly half the world's population combined is still under Buddhism. <clears throat> God, China is still blocking out the gospel, still believes in the dragon, still believes in Buddha and Confucianism, still believe in, in the ancient arts, still believe in Japan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Their ancient hallelujah gods still believe in their ancient philosophies and their ideologies to save them still believe in the philosophies and the worship of mixed gods. Hallelujah. Still don't want any type of religion in their nation. Hallelujah. Half the world's population is still lost. I'm going to hell. 2 Peter 3 and 10 said, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Jesus is coming quickly and suddenly. And the Bible said, in that which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Say great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Say with heat. Oh God. Don't you know the same fire that's going to burn forever is going to burn away this whole world? See, we don't talk about it enough. 
That's why men are not afraid. That's why uh, fat young men are not afraid to pull guns and shoot other people because they think they can get away from the judiciary. They think they can do their obey and sorcery, uh, which they're doing, and get away. They think they can pay off the lawyers uh, and do witchcraft in the courts uh, and pay off judge and magistrates uh, and have their family members steal the pamphlets uh, and the documents from the court uh, and from the police uh, all around the world. So y'all move from here. Don't take, don't get too personal. Hallelujah. I talk about around the world. I'm here. Hallelujah. Take the documents. Uh, oh, judge, don't you know uh, you're going to burn with fur and fire. Uh, you that pervert justice. Uh, you lawyer, you politician. Uh, don't you know you long giver? You think you're going to get away. Uh, your poor, your burning, your, your skin is going to fry uh, like crispy KFC. <laughs> oh, pastor, we don't talk about hell no more. <coughs> Oh, we don't frighten people with hell. The hell with that. I frighten you by telling you the truth. You, you, you police in high rank, you think you will get away with perverting justice? You magistrate, you judge, don't you know you're going to face the true living judge one day? And if you didn't do it right down here, you're going to burn with everlasting fire? I don't want to tell you that. Some of them in hell now. Plenty of the judges and lawyers in hell. <laughs> Oh, you abortionist doctor. I don't have to tell you, you will die and go to hell. You will see what happened. Hallelujah. Oh, God, but you have the time to repent. Hear this young doctor talking to you, my colleague. Huh? You abortionist huh? pharmacist. You abortionist nurse. Huh? You abortionist ob -gyne. Hallelujah. You abortionist. Huh? Hallelujah. You think you will kill babies huh? and get away with it? And the fellow who shoots someone can escape. Uh huh. What bunch of national hypocrites? You want to sell <clears throat> the fellow who had a gun in his possession, who shot someone, and you killing babies every day? You and the clinic. I said it before. It was a pastor. He don't like me. I don't like him. Pastor and a doctor. You on the streets. Everyone know when you call me. Kill the. The baby and the woman bleed out, use Russia to take them to the hospital to patch them up. What hypocrites? You and your wife. And many of these Obi Gani who who at the day in church on Sunday taking the Lord's Holy Communion. What a bunch of scoffers and mockers. Don't you know you're gonna die by that same blood? The biggest abortionists in my city and nation, they go to their church and sing their songs every Sunday. They go to Mass. You think that big house you build on the waterfront mean anything? Eh? It mean nothing. Your skin will face the judgment of God. Because there's no justification for killing a baby in a war according to God's kingdom order. None! And it's on the law book. And now the doctor is gone. One was charged. I didn't hear the story yet. He daddy, a well known politician, must be that pay that off and settle that. Like they do everything else. Your daddy used to do it for years too, so ain't no difference. Your daddy was an abortionist, so you ain't no different. You mean you will kill a baby for a thousand dollars? No. Twelve hundred dollars? No. That's what's happening. And I see some of them report me. Report to Facebook. I don't give two cents. I live for Jesus. I ain't going to hell. I can preach what he tell me to preach. And that's you, your daddy, your mother, your sister, your brother, friend. Tell them the Lord say stop it or you can kill them soon. Because there's only a certain amount of blood. The Lord, I tell you how this prophet speak it. And if I'm the only one in this country, all the other prelates and bishop and prophet, they sold out the government. They're quiet. A bunch of sissy sellouts. That's what they are. They want government position. I saw them and they campaigned over the last few weeks. They're silent. I saw it. That's what when they were party or the other party was in all they had all kind of uh, Facebook live preaching and said all kind of things. We are 
nation of scoffers and mockers and scandalous people because you get government job you will stop saying what the Lord says because I don't care if it's my pa if he's on my ma if they sell an abortion bill you're going to hell tell them I say it so like you said under my pa, my ma and my grandma know how I go she knew how I go and if you don't know how I go yet, when the Lord tell me say something, I don't care if you're the right honorable president or prime minister, I can say what they said the Lord, because huh, hallelujah, I don't fear what you can do, I'm afraid of what Jesus can do. How do I know? I can show you right now. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, when you least expect the Lord to spite some people. I hear the Lord say, get ready to spite some people in the healthcare, watch it. You can send this out. Shut up, Ahaya. He got smart. And I don't need to go no deep town spread. He got smite some people. You who be killing babies silently, guess what the Lord said? Your colleagues know, the community know, the nation know, and it's come up to the Lord. And the Lord has some people praying. Hallelujah. And who has some giving you some time to repent and stop doing it? It's illegal in the kingdom of God to take a life. Hallelujah. It's wrong to take a life. You do not give life. Well, what about an emergency situation? Well, the emergency situation, let the mother live. If you pray and believe God, just how easy it is for you to kill the baby, with your knowledge is easy for you to save the mother and the baby. What's the difference? Huh? Say amen. Isn't it as easy to save the mother? If you have all of the procedures to kill the baby, don't you have all the procedures to save the mother and the baby? Don't tell me that. We live in a time of technology. I'm a physician. There is enough wisdom and ways you can manage the care the mother and the baby will live. First, do no harm. The law of the land said, hey, you, you, you are not supposed to cause the termination. That's in our law of an unborn baby. In the cause of you trying to save the life, if a baby dies, the Lord see and know. Versus you going in there and butchering a baby. And they say people who killing babies. Why I'm on this? I'm on this for a reason. I can say this of Jesus come. You who killing baby want your children to be doctor and lawyer. The same abortion as Obi Gani, general practitioner in their office. They want to brag that their children are doctors and lawyers and, and went off to school of a bloody money. You went to school of a bloody money. You build your practice of a bloody money. You build your house and your boat and your car of a bloody money. You build your a building of a bloody money. And your bloody money and the blood of innocent lives is going to drive you and your wife and your children to hell. I say it. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And ain't no amount of priests can pray into heaven. I say that from the Holy Ghost. Some of them think they go to church and take communion. You ain't saved. You are lost. The Lord said you are not saved. If your husband or your wife is an abortionist and you partake in the money, you are not saved. The same curse and judgment on you and your whole children and all your generation. Hallelujah. You may escape from man, but God said, I see everything you got, every food you enjoy, every drink you enjoy, every vacation you went on and enjoyed, you enjoyed it at the hands of, of the blood of the innocent. And you are bloody. And you're going to face the judgment of God if you don't repent and stop immediately. In fact, the Holy Ghost said some people are so far gone, they are lost to hell already. You know that some people are walking on this earth and their soul is already bound to hell? Oh, I want more one. But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall burn with fervent heat. The earth and all the works that therein shall be burned up. Don't you know everything will be burned up? You fool, you, you losing your soul for this stuff, it's going to be burned up. You fool, you sold your soul, you laid on your back, you went on your knees. Hallelujah, you give up yourself for what? The things of this world, and it's going to burn up. 
and fire. You walked away from God and went after money and mammon and things. Don't you know you fool, you're gonna die and leave it here? Don't you know you fool, you're gonna build barns? Huh? The Bible said there's this parable, Jesus talked about the rich man and the fool. And the rich man said, I'm gonna tear down barns and I'm gonna build bigger barns. You fool, don't you know today your soul is required of you? Don't you know you don't have power over your own soul? Don't you know you don't have power to tell when you will live or die? Now, fool, you plan to live and don't know. I didn't even consider asking the Lord for mercy and life for you. You think you have all power, eh? You think your witchcraft is going to work forever, eh? That's for someone watching. Huh? You be my sire. You think your witchcraft will work. Your witchcraft will blow right up in your face. Hallelujah. Your old man a black fire right on you. Keep it up. Huh? Hallelujah. Your arrow scent is going to blow right up on you. Huh? Your wicked deeds is coming right back. You stay right on the shadow. Keep watching. Let the fire of the Lord go on you. I know who I'm talking to. Your witch. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, including your flesh, your body on roast, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and goodness? He said the same thing. Seeing that you know this happening, you should live righteous. You shouldn't be the dummy you are. You shouldn't be the wicked whore you are. You shouldn't live a whoring life. You shouldn't live a doggish life. You shouldn't live a dumb, wasteful life. You shouldn't live a bitter, unforgiving, jealous life. Jealous of everybody. Jealous of your mother, your father, your sister, your daughter. Jealous of your son. Hallelujah, your daughter, your dummy you. You should build people up knowing that all is burn with fire. And only what we do for Christ will last. I mean, the one stuff now that is going to last in Christ. Hallelujah. You envious and jealous. Hallelujah. Think you will see the face of God? You better try to repent. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost began to show me a few people. Hallelujah. So a few pastors. He said, if they die today, they will go to hell. I begin to see some men who call themselves bishops. Hallelujah. The Lord said, they're so full of anger and bitterness. They're so full of gall. They're so full of manipulation and control. They're so full of self. Them and their wife and their children. If he would have come today, they'd go to hell. All they did and thought they did to people. What did Jesus say? On that day when he shall come to burn up man's work and their deeds and try by fire. He said in that last days, many going to say, didn't I feed the hungry and clothe the naked? The same thing some of them say now. They only feed the hungry and and clothing the naked huh, for self glory. Huh. Hallelujah. Because when you feed the hungry, huh, you're supposed to do it in silence. Huh. When you clothe the naked, huh, no one needs to know. Huh. You're giving money to buy numbers, to buy people. Huh. It's witchcraft. Huh. You gotta use money to get people to church. Huh. It's witchcraft being practiced. Huh. Hallelujah. And you leave the faithful church. Huh. You go with this one, that one, that one. Huh. The one who offers the highest amount of money. Huh. Oh, pastors, listen to me. Huh. Don't run after people with money. Huh? Oh God, everyone who offer you money, huh? you leave those who are you in faithful covenant huh? and fellowship with, huh? and you go to that one because they promise you more money. Huh? Oh God, you're not more than a hall. Huh? You're not more than a church hall. Huh? You're not more than a bishop hall. Huh? You ain't no different from a hall. Huh? A hall who sells her body for money. Huh? A hall, him, a man who sells his body for money. Huh? You sell in the anointing for money. Huh? You sell in the church for money. Huh? You sell in the people of God for money. Huh? There's some people who like to buy. I didn't know about these things until <clears throat> I travel overseas. Huh? Hallelujah. There's some people who's buy church. Huh? Oh God. Huh? The highest money. If you could bring 5,000, 10,000, huh? they would hold crusade. Huh? The bigger the money, huh? the bigger the amount of people. Huh? You're not more than a whore. Because if I don't send you no money, you're supposed to put together 20, 50,000 people to get saved. Huh? Don't tell me send 20,000 and you'll put together 10,000 people. That means if I don't send it, you're in the center, you're nothing more than a whore. Huh? You're prostituting God's people. Huh? You're prostituting God's church. Huh? You're nothing more than a pimp. Huh? A pimp is someone huh, who sells a woman huh, to a man for money. Huh? They're the ones who control the woman. Hallelujah. 
uh, in adultery, in sex slavery. Uh, they're the pimp, they're the sex slave driver, the sex slave master. Yeah, there's nothing more than pimps in the church today. Uh, hallelujah, you will come to my church. Uh, hallelujah, I need a thousand dollars to preach. You're nothing more than a whore. Uh, hallelujah, you gotta go there to preach uh, for two thousand dollars one night service. You're nothing more than a whore. Uh, hallelujah, you need hotel car. Hallelujah, honorarium, food, lunch. Uh, what are you, nothing more than a I gotta get room for you. Use a hall. I gotta provide food for you. Use a hall. I gotta provide money for you after you deliver. Use a hall. Depending on how much you holler, you shout. You want extra money? Use a hall. It's the same thing a hall is do. A hall wants you to get a room. A hall wants you to buy them food. A hall wants you to give them money based on how much you scream, you shout, shout, and how emotional you feel. Some of you pass. Pastors, ministers, bishops, apostles, uh, prophets, you ain't nothing more than pimps, uh, and you got nothing more than whores following you. Uh, whores in the church who you will call on. Uh, don't call on me because I don't whore around. Uh, I never was a whore, uh, and I'll never be a whore. Uh, I'll never pimp off the church. Uh, I'll never pimp off my anointing. I don't sell my anointing for money. Uh, hallelujah. If you don't have it, if God sent me, I'm coming. Uh, if, I don't, if you don't have the money, uh, I'll preach on the street. Uh, I'll preach preach in a building. Huh? I'll preach in a seminar. Huh? I'll preach in a conference. Huh? I pay my own way. I'm not a whore. Huh? I buy my own food. I'm not a whore. Huh? My God shall supply all my needs huh? according to his riches and glory. Huh? Hallelujah. Change your ways. Huh? You're nothing but a whore. Second Peter 3 and 12. Let me get to my message. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the God, wherein the heavens being on fire, say fire. Now how you can read this and say, ain't no hell. And the Lord said, I can cause the heavens to be burned with fire. Huh? Don't fool around today. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be what? Dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, let me get to my hell scriptures now. Deuteronomy. Uh huh. Somebody say amen. If you're watching online, say amen. Thank you, Kalia. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Anthony. Amen. Thank you, Shalewa. Uh huh. Everyone ain't gonna like this. Because some people live in a dirty life, serving to gods, huh? scoffers. They make it a mockery and causing the world to mock the church. Why? Because you live in a whorish life. Because you live in a double standard life. Because you're trying to make money out of the house of God instead of getting people out of their sins. Huh? Instead of preaching to a dark world. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That Jesus said, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 22 says, For a fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell. If hell found in Deuteronomy, don't tell me hell ain't real. And shall consume the earth with her what? Increase. And set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Say amen. Let's turn to the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 9. We can go up. Well, let's go to Job, Job chapter 11. Hell. The Lord said, So many people are on their way to hell. Job chapter 11, verse 8. It is high as heaven. What canst thou do? Deeper than hell. What canst thou know? Hell is deep. <clears throat> hell is deep. Job chapter 26, verse 6. I found hell 57 times in scripture. And that dummy on radio deceiving people so that they can be comfortable in sin. See, if you don't think there's penalty for sin, then you will live comfortably. You will never change if you don't think the torment. And I've heard testimonies of when demons are piercing people in hell. When they're eating their body, ripping through their indivisible bodies, their bodies that never perish, 
with their soul, their mind, their body. It's a spiritual state, but you are very alive and aware, and you're receiving torments of destruction, torments of mockery from demon spirits that are down there tormenting your body eternally. Job chapter 26, verse 6. Hell is naked before him, and destruction had no covering. Psalm chapter 9. Let me go through these scriptures quickly. The book of Psalm chapter 9. We're talking about the kingdom of hell. Oh God, don't go there. What the hell is it? That's the subtopic. Psalm chapter 9. David, the psalm writer, talks about hell. Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into what? Hell. Say hell. Yeah. Who going to hell? The wicked. And all the nations that forget God. Now how the hell you could tell me ain't no hell? When the man before Jesus even came and talked about hell, said the wicked shall be turned into hell. If you're a lesbian, you're wicked. If you're a fornicator, you're wicked. There's a guy from South Africa and Africa down telling people fornication ain't found in the Bible. You're an idiot. Saying sexual immorality and adultery in the Bible. These devils are coming up with new people. These people are coming up with all kinds of devil is using people in high positions to come up with all types of lies and deception. They say a little truth and the rest of it is lies. And if you don't study your word and read the scripture, for God's sake, Google. We have a box my wife bought from Amazon. It's called Alexa. For God said, ask Alexa if hell is real. Alexa can tell you hell real. And you big dummy uh, can Google hell and you'll find hell a hundred times in scripture. <coughs> Don't let no one tell you ain't no hell. The nation. So when I say the nation going to hell, you will get mad at me. I tell you what the God, word of God said. And for now, it looks like this and many other nations are on their way to hell. Why? The wicked are wicked. I mean, I've seen some stuff in social media, what the people doing here, the wicked. We went to a restaurant yesterday. There was a table full of wicked women. Loud and boisterous and loud and arrogant and cocky and squawking. And I heard this little voice going, yeah, yeah, tell. Listen, when I look at God, I didn't know that's man or woman. I mean, more sissy, more cross dressers, more LGBTQ are coming out of the woodworks. I mean, I'm telling you, but if you don't preach the gospel, I don't hate none. I love all. Come to this church, call me, we'll pray for you. We'll drive the devil the hell out of you. I don't care if he's a doctor, lawyer, politician, or a common person. Come, because you got a devil. You know it ain't natural to want a man bogey. I'm a man. I don't have no desire for no bogey. I'm another man. As a man, I don't want to see no other man penis. <laughs> It ain't natural. You're a woman. I heard a lesbian said on, on TV the other day, Hallelujah. She 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 was talking at an event and she was talking about this guy who was so handsome to her. He, she said she'll give up her lesbianism for him. She knows it's wrong. She said she'll give all her bastard, she'll give up her strap on dildo. <laughs> for this man. So the person know it ain't natural. Why you gotta get a rubber dildo to put on to stimulate you or your partner? Huh? Why you can take God's creation called a penis and get it made into a rubber or plastic material to stimulate yourself? Ain't that saying something wrong? You need to real thing. They got some dildo that looks so real now. It have the hand and the veins and everything in it. <laughs> Look like a real penis. What does that say? You want the real thing. A lady told me the other day, uh, a guy she talked to, uh, 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 what do you call the, 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 the vagina looking thing. I mean, I never heard of these things before. A rose or something, they put up, but this is the vagina. Man, why, why you gotta, you have your wife, why are you gonna use that thing? Plastic thing. You 
world is crazy. Hell. The nation. I forget God. What am I saying? That's what I said. The nation going to hell. Why? My point is all this stuff I say I know about every day. That's the wicked. Then you go to the church and the same wickedness in the church. The nation on its way to hell. And the pastors and the bishops wicked. And the pastors and the prelates and the overseers are wicked. And the prelates fighting with other people for church. I tell them, come back. Come back to your church. They don't leave you, buddy. <clears throat> Why would all them faithful people leave you? They know some stuff you've been doing for years. I just wait for the information to come out. You know how the Lord go. They can come out. Say, can come out. They thought that you're doing something, man. Psalm chapter 16, let's move on. Give me a few minutes to give you all these scriptures. Psalm chapter 16, verse 10. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. We know that's the prophetic verse about who? Jesus. The Father did not leave Jesus in hell. He rose him from hell. In the, in the Old Testament, hell is Shoah. In the New Testament, is Ge Gehenna. It don't matter. It's all representative of a real place that people will spend eternity. Psalm chapter 18, verse 5. The sorrows of hell compass me about. Hell is full of sorrow. Hell is full of bring up, disease and suffering and torment. Do you know that you could be a bird and living in hell? If you don't have Jesus Christ as Lord in your life, or you want to halfway serve the Lord and still live in a sinful life, don't you know hell is operating in your life? I used to be there. I used to be tormented. Amen? Sick. Tormented. Couldn't sleep. Why? In sin. Sin eat me away. Hallelujah. Money couldn't add up. No money I could have saved. Huh? Tormented. Couldn't go forward. Couldn't move forward. Hallelujah. Working hard. Couldn't see where the money going. Everything the devil eating up. Eating up. Somebody say amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Some of you might laugh, huh? but some of you still in sin. Huh? Hallelujah. When you're in poverty, that's a curse. Huh? When you're in sex and immorality, that's a curse. Huh? When you have a mental yoke, that's a curse. Huh? When you have a mental disorder, it's a curse. Huh? When you can't sleep at night, that's a curse. Huh? That's hell tormenting you. Because the Bible said, my beloved, he gave perfect sleep. My beloved, he gave it perfect peace. Whose mind is staying on the Lord. The Lord gives you peace. If you torment it, you drug addiction, that's the devil tormenting you. You guilt and shame and suicidal and broken. Hallelujah. If you are angry and bitter with those around you, you're full of jealousy, full of self. Hate to see anyone excel and not anything else. That's like the city I live in. Jealous, hateful, evil folk who hate folk growing, hate folk progressing. Now, hallelujah. Don't have nothing good to say about nobody. Love evil report about people. Love evil things to be said about others. You're nothing more than jealous, envious. Huh? Hallelujah. Self conceited, low self esteem folk. Why? Because when you have a low self esteem, you like to have when other people come down. Huh? But when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you love hearing good report. Oh, whatsoever things are good, kind, and of a loving uh, 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 presentation, these things you must think of, the Bible say. <coughs> but when you're full of hell, when you're full of hell, huh, you love to see a good person come down. Huh? When you're full of hell, you like to see churches close. Huh? When you're full of hell, like some of you, you like to hear about when pastors mess up and fall. Or you like to hear rumors, or huh? uh, something about their family, even though it's all lies. Huh? You nasty, nasty, horrid devil. Huh? There's a horrid, nasty, dirty spirit huh? over this nation. Huh? The Bible said the nation going to hell. The nation that forget God. And this nation has forgotten God. As much as the Lord has brought it through, why do you think they get plucked down every day? This thing happening. Sudden drowning, sudden death. I mean, not a day go by. Some tragedy. Why? A nation has forgot God. God said, you uh, uh, deny me before man, I'll deny you. Huh? You draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. You reject me, I'll reject you, says the Lord. 
The Lord said, I've rejected many families, many people. Someone of your mother was an evangelist. You rejected God. You ain't going to be saved of your daddy's prayer no more. You ain't going to be saved of your mother's good works no more. I don't care if your mother was a deacon, an elder, a pastor, a minister, a missionary. I don't care if your grandmother was that. Some of you are dying. Some of these ministerial children are worse than the sinners. Some of these bishop children are worse than the sinners. Some of these prophet and prophetess children are the drug dealers, the drug pushers, the gang bangers. They worse. And they think they have some type of special uh, covering and protection from God. God ain't pleased with you. God is angry with you. Some of you call yourself bishop. And your children living in adultery. Your children are homosexual. Child, please go talk to your children and set them out up. You want preaching that like you're so deep. You like this missionary woman, like to send me word of the Lord. I got three children who are sissies, one daughter's a lesbian, and another one who's a cokehead. And you want to send me the word. Like this man who said that he's a sinner, he's shocking up, living a shocking up life, still fornicating, old man. Hallelujah, still living an adulterous lifestyle. Hallelujah, lived an adulterous lifestyle all his life. Almost be on the third wife. Huh? Hallelujah. Can't keep a wife. Because <clears throat> you're sweetheart so much. Can't keep your pants up. And will send me quotes every day. Really? Half the people who send me quotes, I don't open it up. Why? I'm not going to open up no quote <clears throat> or nothing you send me. You don't live what you send in me. And I must live the same way, a hypocrite like you. I wouldn't give you the pleasure. Huh? I wouldn't give you the fulfillment. You're not more than a church hall, a church pimp. What are we talking about? You won't send me stuff and don't live it at all. You won't send me Bible verse and you can't get your life together. You won't send me scripture. No, before I send you anything, I gotta make sure I get my life clean up. I gotta make sure I go to God and fast and say, Lord, this desire in my heart, rip it out. Take this nasty, horrid spirit out. Take this homosexual spirit out. Take this drug addiction out. Take this adulterous heart out. Take this bitter heart out, Lord. Before I go talk about, I come to preach for you. May I come to share the gospel with you. I come to encourage you. Encourage yourself. Your wife looked like two minutes before. Go fix up your wife. Huh? Catch by your wife some nice outfit and clothes. You all are the true preacher. Look at your wife. Look like two minutes to nine. Break right down. Go buy your wife some shoes. I see my wife some shoes on today. I said, they, they look nice, eh? My money. But she worked for it, and she deserved it. And she works hard. Go fix it, your family, yeah? All about talking about this and that, huh? And your wife look righty, huh? And you talking about Jesus. Fix it all house. You ain't got nothing to say to me. Husband, daddy, tea, yellow and crazy. <clears throat> Peasy hair. Smelly old clothes. Had them old clothes. Everything I wear, thank God for my wife. I I have pants I wear yet because my wife bought me so much pants. Pants I wear yet. Shoe I just put on. Shirt wearing for the first time. Why? The she ain't gonna let me be old, smelly. Hallelujah. More cologne and lotion and bad things she bought for me. All kind of bad shit. I'm trying to smell good for her. Hallelujah. Not for you, skanky gals. <laughs> Smell my shoe. I just put it on at the night when I'm home. That's good for you. So only I can smell that lotion and shampoo and shower gel. The devil is a liar. And that body spray. That's for her. Sorry. Now when I go and I can put on my little cologne, but don't get too close. <laughs> Say hallelujah! Uh huh. Fix up your own household! Fix up your own Excuse me. Dirty run that house, and you want to share the gospel? The devil in your house. Hallelujah. Your children marriage crumbling. And you will talk with Jews Bishop. Fix up your own children marriage. Take some time. Call them together. Hallelujah. I know this bishop guy. <coughs> Hallelujah. The one daughter, uh, adulterer, 
son, the son in law adulterous and had it instead of sitting him down to try passing the marriage, huh? they went to that mashup. Huh? Then the new man, she went that mashup. Huh? Hallelujah. Now the, the same girl who grew up in church mashed right up. Huh? Your other daughter mashed up. Huh? Marriage mashed up and failed. Huh? Hallelujah. You so powerful. Huh? You got so much wisdom. Huh? You in prayer all the time. Huh? Hallelujah. Your wife in prayer all the time. And you couldn't call. Hallelujah. Two young people together. The parts of their marriage. Huh? Hallelujah. You so deep. Huh? And you so spiritual. And you in the house of God all the time. And the Holy Ghost in front of you. Hey, call your son and daughter in law and fix their marriage. Don't let them go down like fools. Hallelujah. Other daughter, hallelujah, marry and run off. Hallelujah. With a druggy. Hallelujah. With a suck off. Hallelujah. Suck, suck, suck everything off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you think that's God. And then some of these pastors and ministers, uh, some of these people who call themselves saints, uh, hallelujah, they think they own it. The Bible said, if you don't take care of your family, you're worse than a for them. I just take care of my wife and children. You are grown man. You have children and grandchildren, and only the children in your household you think you should give for them? Use an infidel. That's what the Bible calls you. I ain't calling you that. You're nothing more than an infidel. Listen to me. Huh? You got other children and grandchildren who you don't give bread to. Huh? You never give water to. Huh? You never, uh, hallelujah, buy a jockey or panty for. Huh? Hallelujah. Call yourself bishop. You're a liar. Some of these people, I don't care what they call themselves and what they act like. I look at their life. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of these pastors, their daughter called me the other day for money. And say, please tell my daddy, call me, please. I'm graduating with my masters. I was too shame. Calling me to get them money help. Why? You so deep as a bishop, but your daughter graduated with a masters. And you couldn't even send money. She had to call me to get uh, a little stipend to pay a little bill. I can't reach you on the phone. And use a bishop. John, please, you gotta repent, yeah? God ain't pleased with these things. God, it's not pleased. You call yourself pastor. You call yourself bishop. You call yourself missionary. And your family's a wreck. The first thing the Bible said, he who has the office of a bishop has a, a honorable a, a ministry. He must be the husband of one wife. He must run his household well. His children supposed to be in order and living in an orderly life. Must be living a godly life. He must have a good name and a good reputation in the church and out. And I can tell you from in the church, I know your family and you treat them bad. You ain't living the right life. I pray today, many of you pastors and ministers, the Lord said many pastors and ministers and bishops and apostles, you're going to hell. You have a bitter heart. You've caused confusion in your family. You've divided your family. Many of you missionaries, you women, you've divided your family. You've manipulated your family to like you and kept your children divided and fight among themselves. You could have been the, the, the unifier. You could have been the encourager. You could have been the blesser. But no, you like being the divider. You like the attention coming to you. Huh? Hallelujah. You're prejudiced. You're biased. Huh? And you, his wife, you are nothing more than a witch. Hallelujah. Because any woman who say they're praying would say to that man, honey, huh? oh, that child might not be a mine. Huh? But the Spirit of the Lord woke me up and said, call your child. Huh? Call your grandchildren. Huh? Show them love. Show them support. Huh? Hallelujah. You yourself will do it. Huh? You're nothing more than a witch. Huh? Hallelujah. Jealous. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? You didn't expect huh? some of these women, huh? they didn't expect huh? the man children to do so well. Huh? They taught the man child huh? they had before them was going to fail and falter. But the child come up huh? and do better than your own children in your own household. Huh? Yeah, that child had to beg for bread. Huh? Yeah, that child huh? didn't have all nah, the necessities. Huh? <coughs> Cutting no, to swim practice, huh? couldn't play the piano. Huh? Hallelujah! Yeah, that child, huh? oh God, had to suffer and eat 
torn out of bread, had to go to sleep hungry, hallelujah, without a father in the house, but my God is a loving God, and I know many children who the Lord has rose up with just a mother and without a father and then when that child becomes something you, you big eye father what talk but that's my child you didn't contribute nothing to that child development don't take your little five hundred dollars your little thousand dollars every couple of months meant something oh lord that mother and grandparents aunties and uncles had to pour into that child oh god the lord had to send people into the lives of some of these young men and women because they have no good infidelities her parents infidel infidel fathers infidel mothers oh god who didn't do anything for that child development didn't call them and didn't speak into their life didn't bless them didn't encourage them it ain't all about the money you're gonna make coverage a niece or nephew but you burn up your bridges some of you you made money you live your big life but god has stripped it away i know some families oh god i talk about hell who had all the blessings years ago oh god I used to remember them. They had it all. Huh? But now I've grown up. Huh? And now I've seen them. They're poor and they're struggling. Huh? They can barely make it. Can't things. Huh? Can't work out for them. Why? Because when they had it, they didn't share it. Huh? They didn't help their brothers and sisters. Huh? They didn't help their nieces and nephews. Huh? They didn't help their children and grandchildren. Huh? And the Lord's stripping away. Huh? And he's stripping more away. Huh? Stripping, stripping, stripping. Hallelujah. Huh? God is not more. Huh? What you sow, you will reap. Huh? You think it or get away, but God said, I see your heart. Come on, Jesus. And I'm gonna take it away from you. And I'm gonna take it and give it to the more faithful. See back and then God. God, I hear the Holy Ghost say, I'm getting ready to take uh, some riches, some wealth. I'm getting ready to take some land and properties. <clears throat> some from men, from some from from some men and women and I'm going to pass it on to the next generation I'm going to pass it on to people who want my heart I'm getting ready to shut some churches uh, of people who've been pimped and prostituted and I'm sending them to hallelujah ministries of pastors who have my heart I see some church, church closing here and overseas and in some nations I see God moving some people off the scene and transferring their wealth, their possessions into the hands of people uh, who are going to be faithful stewards unto me, said the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 18 and 5, the sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. Psalm chapter 49, verse 15, I'm bringing this close home, close it out so. Psalm 49, Verse 15, I'm talking about him. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For he shall receive me. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, deliver my soul from the power of the grave. Another thing for grave is hell. How many know the Lord can deliver you from hell? Hell and the grave. Hallelujah. Death, hell, and the grave. You will see it's a spirit. Uh, Psalm 55 and 15. Psalm 55 and verse 15. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. Oh God. David said, let them go to hell. Hallelujah. So if someone told you go to hell, you better pray hard. Because David said, Lord, let them go to hell. Send them to hell. There's some demons in our deliverance. We send them to hell. Oh God, I love deliverance. Oh God, so they were our ministry, kingdom, apostolic, here and around the world, all of our network churches. Oh, we love the deliverance. Oh God, I remember one guy, one of the main messages I learned from a, a, a known apostle who I understudy. He said, when someone has an issue with deliverance of hell, Chances are they in hell or in sin themselves. I remember this close friend. Every time I talk about deliverance, oh, that's not a demon. That's not a demon. That's not a demon. Right now he backslidden and in hell. Why are you gonna fight it? Hell is hell. The power of hell is real. 
Jesus said, I will build my what? Church. And the gates of what? Hell shall not prevail against it. That means hell gates are working against you. Every day. I don't care if you're an apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher. I don't care who you are. The power of hell's gates wants to work against your life. Hell wants to open up <clears throat> from hell into your life. There's a problem from hell. Hallelujah. Every time you open up into a type of sin, the gates of hell open up and demons from that realm come out and into you. <clears throat> Those that are unbound. Oh, help me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do you know that there's some demons unbound yet still? Oh, God. Psalm 86 and 13. Psalm 86. Say, Lord, help me. Say, Lord, help me. Psalm 86 and 13. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest what? Hell. Hell has different dimensions. There's the highest hell, there's low hell, medium hell. There's a different type of hell. Everyone I've spoken to or I've listened to their testimony of those who've gone to hell and the Lord rose them up, they all say the same thing. There are different realms of hell for different realms of sinners. There's a hell for believers who rejected Jesus and backslid. There's a level of hell for the Bible said you should be beaten with many stripes. Why? There's a level of hell. Oh, I remember sometimes I messed up on God. The whipping I got in my soul. It ain't a physical beating. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Some people call it conviction. Some people call it guilt. Some people call it punishment. All is the same level. And the higher you go, God, the lips I got in my soul, and no amount of prayer moves it. Because God makes sure you get a certain amount of torment. The Bible said, if you have unforgiveness, the Lord releases the spirit of torment. And the demons of torments come and torment you. Psalm 86 and 13. <clears throat> you delivered my soul. That means hell could be operating in your soul now. Some people, know it's the soul, the suke, the mind, the body, the will, the emotion. Some people, hell controls their life. You know what? You can pray all you want. They've committed to hell. They've given access to hell. They've given access to demons, devils, and Lucifer himself. Their whole agenda is to get up. They wake up thinking about sin. They wake up thinking about gambling. They think about who they're going to rob from, steal from today. They think about who they're going to, ah, uh, how much dope they're going to smoke, how much sex they're going to have with prostitutes and pimps and different women uh, who are not their wife. Hallelujah. That's what some people are. Some people, that's what they think all day, all through their thoughts. Uh, hallelujah. You get in their car, the music playing, all they're talking about is sin. Hallelujah. The life. We have a generation that is sin bound. All on their phone is pornography. All in their house is pornography. All in their phone contacts is pornography. All they do on social media all day is send out pornographic, huh? fornicating, unrighteous, ungodly messages. All they do, every word they come on their mouth is a cuss, a profanity, an impurity. There are some people like that. Their soul is already tied into hell. Psalm 116. Are you seeing how hell, real hell is? Psalm 116 verse 3. The sorrows of death compass me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. The pains of hell. Oh, you remember when you were not saved? Or some of you when you, when you were even were saved and, 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 and still in sin? The pain of hell, man. Ooh. I don't ever want to go back there. The pain of sin, the guilt, the shame, the torment that I endured from hell's influence. Oh, I don't ever want to go back there. Oh, it's painful. I cry out to the Lord. Thank God He changed my life. Thank God He gave me grace and mercy to endure, to overcome. Hallelujah. This is not a message to condemn you. This is a message to say, get out of hell. 
get the hell out or get hell out of you. Get hell's power and influence out of your life. And then don't die and go to a physical place called hell. Don't be in hell in the earth. Don't let hell rule your life here on earth. Don't let Satan kill, steal, and destroy your life here. And then you die and go to another place. Hell. Christ the cell. Psalm 139. If you need that turning point, I want you to begin to pray and ask Jesus into your life now. You don't have to wait till the end. Ask him now. Share this with someone. Let someone know, don't die and go to hell. Wherever you are in prison, don't die and go to hell. Don't die in a deathbed. Many people said, oh, I can wait till I'm on my deathbed. Oh, the devil ain't dumb like that. He might be foolish. He might be a silly, dumb enemy. But he ain't stupid. All of these people, look how the devil killing people now. Huh? Young age, killing them in sin. Every day we hear about a drive-by shoot. Why? The devil getting guys in gangs and killing them, breaking in their house and shooting them. Other people lose their mind and chopping up people. And people least expect. All ages. If you're five and you don't know Jesus, you better get to know him now. The devil ain't letting children live the seven no more. If you're 14, don't think you're going to live the 16. If you're 16 thinking you're living your life, you will change when you get 25. The devil trying to kill you at 16. The devil trying to kill you at 18. You think when you get 18, you're going to live your life for a few years. You're going to go off and, and shock up. You're going, to, you're going to party. You're going to wild out. You're going to be there every party, every concert, every event. You're going to travel the world. You're going to just live your life. One day when you're 25, 30, uh-uh, the devil tried to kill you before then. And if he don't kill you physically, he want to kill your hopes and your dreams. Uh, I can get a witness. I was one of them. The devil will make you think you got long before you know it. He in your life, uh, destroying everything the Lord had for you. Uh, every dream the Lord had planned. Everything he had purposed for your life. Uh, one after the other, the devil kills, steals, and destroys. Uh, leave you naked, lonely, broken, abandoned, suicidal, tormented, uh, defeated, worthless. Uh, he uses your body to you're worthless. And if it wasn't for some prayer, he would have killed you. But now the intensity is on the devil killing you in your sin. Right in that shack of that relationship, killing. Right under that club, shooting up in, your, in the club. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right from that lover's house, right in the car, shooting up. Oh God, don't let the devil kill you in this hour. Psalm 139 and verse 8. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make up my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. I'm going to skip to Jesus. Matthew chapter 5. Let's see what Jesus has to say about hell. Now, all of those Old Testament writers wrote about hell, I might have been skeptical. Even though I wouldn't believe. But let's see what Jesus said about hell. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments... I shall teach man so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. There are some people who are least in the kingdom of heaven. In fact, they're in the kingdom of hell because they are not practicing the commandments of the Lord. And secondly, they're telling people not to practice it too. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom. For I said to you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. There are many people who ain't even as righteous as the Pharisees and Sadducees. That's another message. You have heard that it was said of by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say of his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. 
But whosoever shall say, Thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Bible said, You call your brother a fool. And your brother in Christ, you call a fool. Because the Bible said, They that say in their heart, There's no God is a fool. Not a person who is in Christ. But see, Jesus here talks about hell. Verse 29, Matthew chapter 5, 25. 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, what? Pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So how can that man on the radio and those who are preaching at Carlton Pearson and all of his followers and all of his partners and pastors who follow him can say there's no hell? I mean, there's a movement of people around the world. And those who don't know it, Bishop Carlton Pearson died. He was a well-known pastor, a part of a Pentecostal movement. And because his uncle died, a spirit of delusion came into him. And he began to reject what the Word of God says about hell. Sad story. Very powerful man who went to a very powerful... Bible College, All Roberts University. Pentecostal, leading a powerful move of God around the world. And in his last 20 years, he was teaching the world there is no hell. There is no penalty for sin. He started teaching the message of inclusion, homosexual, lesbian, everyone. It's just nothing going to happen to you. That means just live your life and don't worry about it. Uh, no hell and no sin and no demon and no devils. Direct contradiction to the word of God. And many tried to warn him and he didn't listen. Because he was full of self and pride. And he died. Not believing and receiving the truth of God's word. And God forbid if he is now in eternal hell. The very place he said doesn't exist. He woke up on his dead bed. And on his dead last message I watched it. Hoping and I was praying that he would have said, I was wrong. Please forgive me, Lord Jesus, and all the people I've misled around the world who I said there's no hell and no going to hell and no price for hell and everyone is included and, and, and came up with a gospel called the gospel of inclusion. Sorry for the heresy, the errors, the occultish uh, network I've created to cause white, blacks, Indian, mix, and all sorts of people, gay, lesbian, to go to hell. And he refused to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. Refused to accept. That's when someone's life is being overtaken by hell. And even on his deathbed, Satan had him so blind that he didn't even repent. Like he led many to repent 20 plus years earlier. What a sad story. That goes to show even if you're a bishop and an apostle, you could die and go to hell. Even if you were a revivalist around the world, I stay on my knees because I've seen men who are great revivalists, great Pentecostal leaders, great apostolic leaders die and go to hell. Go off into apostasy and heresy and that die going to the same hell they once preached about. Matthew 5 and 30, and if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It had been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. You see that bit? We'll talk about that later. Talking about hell. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after him is not worthy of him. Sorry, 28. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You hear what Jesus is saying? Jesus said, 
Preach, son. Left, son. That's why I live this way. I don't fear anybody who could touch this body. First of all, I believe Jesus to kill anyone who come my way, talk but touch me and my family life. That's how I pray. You come my way, I ask you, Jesus to kill you and take you to hell. Why? That's my defense. You ain't gonna play with me like that. That's how we pray. That's how we pray. Kingdom apostolic. So if you come my way, you better have good, good, good. You, you better be prepared. I told a fellow that the other day in my office. I let him straight his eyes. I said, let me tell you something, brother. The Spirit of God just came upon me for whatever reason. I said, if I get on my knees and my face before the Lord, you will be a dead man by Jesus Christ. I ain't touching you. Jesus will kill you. And those who don't like that message, the hell with you all on that. You, you think you're going to bring something to harm me? No, brother. I pray for my angels to smite and kill you. My angels that are around me, that are God for me, that's me. You don't like it, the hell with you. You don't know your scripture, you don't know the word. I know the authority I have in the word of God. And the authority I have in my angels to protect me. He gave his angels charge over me to protect me. I'm going to use my angels to smite you. To destroy you. And when I pray, I know what my prayer, I've seen him done it before. And he ain't going to stop doing it now. But Jesus said, don't even fear them who think they have power to kill your body. Because you ain't going to die, we're going to live. You're going to kill my body, we have a purpose and assignment. And ain't no witch, warlock, wizard, or no dirty devil in them, or their mouth, or their heart, will take me out before Jesus said my work is finished. And he ain't gonna let me be taken out by your bullet or your knife or your car crashing into me. The devil is alive. I go in like the saints, lay down and transition in glory. If he doesn't come, I believe he's gonna come. He gonna meet him. He gonna meet us preaching. I ain't retiring. Some of these lazy pastors, but retiring. All you want is pension money to go lay up. What you gonna do? Sit until Jesus comes. That's all you gonna do. If you retire from preaching and pastoring, what else you gonna do? If God called you to preach, where in the scriptures he tell you, take a retirement, take a retirement package, take your annuity, <laughs> take your pension plan, and go lay up on drink mimosas. What else you gonna do? Huh? You've been preaching for 30 years. What you can tell Jesus now? The rest of the 20 years he might give you. You're going to be there when you speed those drinking martinis. Uh, that's all you can do. What you can do? You will find some sinful thing to get into. Trust me. Part of the gospel that keeps you safe. The matter of fact that I know I got to preach is the matter of fact that keeps you safe for the week too. The matter of fact I know I got to stand before God's house it keeps you safe. The matter of fact, I gotta deliver the word, it keeps me fasted. If I wasn't preaching and teaching and I close up the work of the Lord, I can find something to do. And sin ain't far off. Mm, that's for someone right there. Those who retire, get out of retirement, get your skin back in the house of God. I don't know who, who taught you that nonsense, following after man. Y'all too like fall of fashion. Not because pre late didn't mean you must do it. Pre late off himself. Go in souls with retirement. It's an insult to the forefather. Jesus gave his life. Peter gave his life. Paul said, I run my race up. All of them died upside down. People are being martyred for this gospel. The fathers of the faith are preaching to their nineties. The great men and women of God preach to the end. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, in their old age, walk with God. Methuselah, Jacob, Joseph, even David. Huh? The prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Joel, they walk with God. John, the revelator, in his old age on the island of Patmos. Still getting revelation and visions from the Lord on the Isle of Patmos and wrote revelation to the end. 
and you what an insult to the kingdom of God. You get to set a new trend, but you will re retire. Huh? Speaking of souls going to hell yelling. And I'll be attending ain't nothing much happened. Souls still to be one, honey. There's still a world of seven billion people and more than half of the world population in uh, 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 saved here. And the Bible said anyone who put their hand to the plow and looking back is not unworthy. Bishop prelate, man, woman, in this retirement, you ain't worthy. You're not worthy. The Bible said you ain't worthy. You ain't fit for God's kingdom. That means all you did all them years, God said you ain't even fit. You know, stopping and turning back. You know, sabbatical from the gospel. Only sabbatical you need is if you in sin and you need a year to get your life and your marriage and your family sorted out. That's the only sabbatical. Then when you finish getting him back on the fiery line, get back to the work of the Lord. Even if it ain't public ministry, you can still evangelize. You can still some, tell somebody about Jesus. You can still go to a mission in Africa. Uh, even if you fail in America to homosexuality or lesbianism or adultery, I mean, you can still go to Africa and preach to the village. God ain't finished with you yet. Say amen. You can still go to India, they ain't gonna know what you did in America, or Canada, or Bahamas, or London. You can still go to the islands of the Pacific and be an evangelist there. Don't tell me you're going to hide in the shell to go play golf. It's nothing more than a sinner. <laughs> amen. Say amen. Amen. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Retirement. The child like God has put us in retirement. In retirement. <sighs> 30 years of ministry now I'm in retirement. It's a joke. I made a 30 years of ministry and I ain't even nowhere ready to retire. 30 years plus of ministry. I just started. I pray God to give me another 40 more years to walk with him. Matthew 16 and 18. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hell has gates. That wants to overcome you. Matthew 18 and 9. And if thy eye of family pluck it out and cast it from thee, it is better for thee to enter life with one eye rather than two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Say hell fire. Hell fire. Say hell fire. Hell fire. Mm -hmm. The book of Acts chapter 2. Acts 2. 27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. And verse 31. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus had God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Amen. The Lord Jesus went into the hell, the Bible said, and he made a show of principalities and powers. Now let's get to these two key scriptures that we've done. Second Peter 2. Say amen. Say amen. amen. Say the hell, the hell. with hell. hell. <laughs> you know, I, I lived in Tennessee. I went to Bible school there. And it was forbidden for Christians to say the word hell. Even today, you go in some parts in the south, you can't, it's like hell is a cursed word. You see how tricky the devil is? You can say all kind of F, triple pile word, but hell, you can go, no, I can't say hell. <laughs> you call it everything. Go to H, go to H. E double hockey stick. 
I'm like, what? No, hell is hell. Hell in the Bible. Hell is in there. Hell is in the Bible. Hell is a real place. Hell is a spiritual dimension that operates against people's lives even while they're alive. Hell is hell. Hell is hell. Hell is hell. See, the devil don't want people to say hell because it reminds them of hell. So he want them to take that people feel so religious not saying the word hell. You can cuss on every other word, but you can't say hell. What hypocrisy. That's like not reading Revelation. Oh, don't read Revelation. It's too scary. And it's the book of Revelation. So again, I made an intentionally play on the words of hell because the world needs to hear hell. Can you imagine all those people who been taught not to say hell or talk about hell or discuss hell? I mean, if you're preaching, you can't even preach and say hell in America in some places. And it's a religious thing that is all that. No, it's wrong. You're supposed to say hell. If you're living that lifestyle, you're going to hell. If you're living that ungodly lifestyle, you're going to hell. Jesus said you're going to hell where the worm died not and the fire is not quenched. Hallelujah. Cut off that part that offends the Lord's command of let your whole body die and go to hell. It's there. 2 Peter 2 and 4. Watch this. For it, watch this, watch this, Pastor. Saints of God, listen quietly, quietly. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after shall live ungodly, and delivered just Lord, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, Vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly there that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous of their self will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Whereas angels which are great in power and might bring not really accusation against them before the Lord. The Lord said, I have created hell for demons and I've sent them there. Don't get in trouble. God said, the Bible said, God did not spare those angels that were in his presence from going to hell. Nor did he spare anyone who lived unrighteous. Revelation chapter 20. Verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit. And a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is called the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Oh, Satan hates this message now. Y'all share this out. I know it's been long. Share this. And let the devil and all of his followers, let the Satanists, let the wicked, <clears throat> let the witches and warlocks and the demons and devils, and even you, Satan, you're going to be bound by one angel. Say one angel. Oh, hallelujah. He makes you think he's bigger than he is. Eh? Yeah, he's a powerful devil, but he's powerless to Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. And an angel is going to grab him, my leg, and lay hold on him, Christian, and that angel is going to and cast him into the bottomless pit. That's another thing. It's hell. There's the lake of fire and there's the bottomless pit. You see all that? Watch this. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more for the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loose a little season. Say amen. Amen. Verse 2. 
Verse 7. And when the thousand years expire, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Say prison. Say Satan go into prison. The devil go into prison. Anytime he will fight, you remind him, devil, go to prison. You go into prison. And he should go about to deceive the nations. Say nations. Verse 13, watch this. And the sea gave up the dead. Say the sea gave up the dead. Which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their work. See that? Hell. People who die is appointed unto man once to death. And after death the judgment. People are already being sentenced to hell. But when the great judgment come, everyone who died in the sea will raise from the dead with their body. Everyone, hallelujah, that were in the grave and those who were in hell, they will be raised up and judged according to their works. You hear me? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Say, lake of fire. Sit down. Sit. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And watch this. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I can read it again. Death and hell, Revelation 20 and 14. Yeah. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When that book is open, shout hallelujah. And if your name is not written in that book of life, you can think it's a fantasy all you want. A day is coming, oh Lord, say, oh Lord, please let my name be written in the book of life. Say, oh Lord, wash away my sins. I want my name to be in the Lamb's book of life. Oh Lord, Spare me from hell. Save me. Wash me. And keep me to the end. In Jesus' name. The Bible says, And he that endureth to the end shall be saved. The book of Revelation 17 and 8 says, The beast that stole it was and is not. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Stand to your feet as we pray. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. It's a great burning in this pit. They came out of the smoke, the locusts upon the earth, and upon there was given power. It was done with the pit where they were unchained and unbound, and it was opened up. As the scorpions of the earth have power, 
And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, any neither any tree, but only those men which had not the seal of God in their forehead. Some spirits that are coming out of the bottom of the spirit to torment people. I hear the Lord say today, there are some people you and I can't pray for because a demon spirit from hell has come on the earth to torment the unrighteous. There are some people who are unrighteous, there's no breakthrough for them unless they come fully to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Revelation 9 and 5, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their head were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, which is in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue had his name called Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two more woes reft. And thus I saw, verse 17, the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, and having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were the heads of lions, and out of the mouths issued fire and spoke and brimstone. Don't tell me no fire, hail and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, by the brimstone that issued out of their mouth. But their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and, they, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorcery, nor their fornication, nor their theft. The Bible said, in spite of judgment coming to the world today, and men being slain and killed by these spirits that have power to torment them and then eventually kill them, there is still a world that is not repentant. Shut up. But I say today, To those who are listening and watching and sharing this with their family and loved ones. The time is running out. Satan is on an all out attack to take as many people to hell with him as he can because he knows he will be cast into the bottom of the spit. He will be thrown in eternal fire. He will be condemned forever. There's no repentance, no change for Lucifer, that fallen angel, and all of his demons. The Bible said hell was created for Satan and his devils and those angels. It's being prepared and God did not spare them judgment. So he's not going to spare man and humanity judgment those who violate his words. Yeah. If you're here today, repent. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'll say repent. Please repent. Please come to the saving knowledge of the Lord. If you don't know the Lord is your Lord and personal Savior today, I ask you to make Him your Lord and Savior. Would you say this prayer? Close your eyes with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Save me from hell. Hell on earth and hell in the future. 
I want to be saved. Come into my heart. I renounce every other God. I renounce secret societies. I renounce the worship of idols. I renounce the worship of self. I renounce the worship of the things of this world. And I surrender to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving me. I am saved by the blood of Jesus and all that you did on the cross. Thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. Revelation 22, and I speak this over you today, said, Blessed are they that do his commandments. It's the commandments of Jesus Christ through the Bible. That they might have right to the tree of life. The tree of life that lives forever. And they enter into the gates into the city. For without our dogs, outside that city of us, dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, murderers, adulterers, and whosoever make it, whosoever love it and make it alive. That's not you today. God bless you. May God keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be your peace. Revelation 21. That, and verse 7, he that overcome shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderer, the whores, homongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, this is what I'm trying to find, shall have their part in the lake which burn it with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Kila for calling Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. Thank you for staying with us the whole time. Go back, watch the share. I want to pray for you and your family. I pray a prophetic blessing over you today. Those who stay to that, I speak blessing. I speak peace. I speak grace. I speak strength for you to go out and teach and tell the world before it's too late that Jesus saves, that Jesus delivers, and Jesus wishes that not to die and go to this tormentous, destructive, ungodly place, but all will come to everlasting life. That's you today. Make Jesus your choice. Let us know how this ministry has blessed you. And if you were blessed by today, please watch and share this on YouTube or on Facebook or Power and Glory TV, Kingdom Insight. We thank you. We're going to continue part three uh, next week, Lord willing, on the kingdom of hell, the power of hell. What in the hell is this? Thank you for watching. God bless you and keep you. I speak a blessing over you and your family this week. Have an enjoyable weekend. Give your hearts all to the Lord. Seek the kingdom of God. In the kingdom will and in the will of the king, I will see you next week. Thank you again. Uh, go on to Amazon. Look for these teachings from Kilafo Kali and Shalei Bakali. Uh, teachings on the kingdom. That